Hello and welcome to the third in a series of tutorials for XFX glass panels. There are a set of plugins for Final Cut Pro 10 that allow the overlay of clean, simple glass panels with images, video and text. In the first tutorial we built this side panel with text, a drop zone and independent animating bullets. In the second tutorial we added movement of the image and a transition. Now we're going to look at text options because there's quite a lot. Let us know what you think of the plugin in the comments below and of course a like and subscribe will let you know when we post new videos. On to the typography example and we have here um, a compound clip just to open it. Got the picture of the woman leaning on the window and then as from our previous tutorial we've actually got um, this zoom up down on there which gives us this nice little move. We want to keep everything moving, don't want anything static on there. Right, we like that. Now I'm going to go up to glass panels, they're in the title inspector, and pick sidebar left. And you can see it's a bit long, but we'll bring that down. And here we have a side panel. And at the moment it's got some fairly dull text on there, and we're going to change that. Now there are so many options for text, we could load a lot of things up and have different lots of text, but hopefully me showing you how you can change the text on here means you can take any of these that we've got and turn them into something special. So the first thing is we need to extend this panel out. So we go into the controls in the inspector and go to panel size. And again, I'm going to put my um, thumb on the alt button so that gears everything down. And I'm going to stop just before it starts to go over her denim jacket there. That's fine. And then we need to move this text. You can do that by just clicking on it. And the fact I clicked on it means it brings up the uh, controls for the text in here. And that's because these are built as titles. If um, you build a plugin and it's um, just a generator, you don't get access to all of this. And this is critical to making text look good. And that's what I want to spend a bit of time on. So first things first, we are going to put a price on this. And let's say we are going to call it $99.99. Okay. Now I'm going to make sure that that is centered and then bring that back in because everything we're going to have on this panel is going to be centered down this, this panel. And I don't want to go through and have to line everything up. So once I've got one centered, everything should be fine. Okay. On that. Now, don't particularly like the font, but that's Helvetica new. We'll come back to that in a while. And the one I do like begins with an M. I know when I see it, it's a Mish, Mishafi. Right, quite like that one. It's a little bit small, no problem. Go into the inspector and we'll increase the size. But I don't like that because it's putting a lot of emphasis on the sense here and I don't want that, not a problem. This is one of the main tips about changing text on a template. If you select what you want, you can actually go and change that. So maybe I should have selected the decimal point as well, which is probably a good idea. And we'll shrink that down. There you go, got a much better looking price on there. Um, having said that, I don't particularly like the way it looks at the moment. So what I'm going to do is make sure you select the whole lot, go down, turn the outline on and the face off. And we're going to change that to white. That's looking much better. Much classier and bring that down somewhere around there. So you can see it's kind of like going from bold to uh, that when it, um, because it's unrendered. And it'll actually end up looking like that when it comes out rendered. Now, my big moan about typography is kerning. And if you don't know what kerning is, it's the space between characters. And here you can see we've got some kerning errors. So the whole idea, this space here is far too large. So I'm going to put my cursor between the nine and the decimal point. On the wrong side, there we go. And then go down to kerning and move the slider along to get that a bit closer together. And maybe the 99, so as well. Go to kerning, a bit closer. And also possibly, no, I think that looks okay. Okay, that's looking a lot better, a lot neater. And you can see the price because we've shrunk those down. Next, I want a description of the item. So I'm going to do a carriage return and then go material. And as you can see, look, that's huge. Right, so time to go back to Helvetica New. 
which I tend to use a lot of, as you might have spotted. And again, we're going to have to go put, turn the face on, but don't select that. Bring the size down. Yep, I like that. And we're going to go 100% cotton. It's a bit too big. Select the whole lot. Remember, you need to select it. If you do the whole lot, if you select the whole lot, you'll change this as well. And you don't want to do that, but it's probably looking at that. I quite like it. Um, but I know it. Uh, yeah, let's go from regular to go to thin. That looks a lot nicer on there. Now, you see, we've got this big space between the price and the material. That's because it's thinking we're going to tap another one of these in. So it's spaced it down. That's not a problem. If I go back up to the 99, and then adjust the baseline. Unfortunately, that's bringing that down. Not a problem, because what I can do is push that back up to there. I like that. OK, another line of text. If I spell it right or get the case right. Machine washable. That's really nice. And it's taken the line spacing from this um, this size text now, which we like that. And then also what I'm going to do, a couple of carriage returns to space it down. And then I'm going to do some spaces. I'm going to go um, extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. OK, I like that, but I can't see the differentiation between the sizes. OK, what I need to do is go through and put a space on each of those to, to make them a lot more readable on there. So we've got the price, what it is, and the size is available. So if you're building an ad or something like this, it's really easy to do. So when I play, I get this panel come in, I've got the price and the details, and it's all really nice typography on there. You could go through, there's probably a bit more kerning you can do. Look, I mean, look at this. It's one thing I hate about kerning is numbers as well. The, the space between the one and the uh, two zero should be a lot less than that. So again, let's go up to the one and we go kerning. And you could bring that in on there. So I mean, it's a great way to alter the text in the template, but you have to go through and highlight the exact text you want. It's something like um, tracking, which is a kind of like a global kerning thing. I could do that on machine washable and just hit the tracking and that would expand out. The whole idea of good typography is to make it readable. You normally kind of, you don't even read it, you just scan it and you can, un you can understand it. And using different sizes, and we've got two different fonts on here, you don't want to go any further than that really. Um, but that makes that all quite legible and let me just click off so you see that there you go and that's the final result so hopefully that will give you some ideas with typography um, as I said we didn't put all the different variations that you can do with text into the templates because we thought well if we did all those, we'd have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these things. And even trying to find something would be a nightmare. So hopefully by going through this tutorial and showing you how to alter text, different text parameters on different lines, you'll now know how to do that with all our templates. And you'll get some really good looking text out of these glass panels. And that's the end of the third of our tutorials on XFX glass panels. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you enjoy the plugin. Goodbye.